Tonight on Panorama, we expose a scandal in education. It's just really upsetting. The money should have been spent on the children. We show what can happen when the school budget is handed over to big business. I'm a Conservative MP. This is our party policy. But I'm speaking out because it's wrong. And this Sorry, is a work completion filming. certificate, sir. We investigate that a multimillionaire accused of overcharging the schools he was also running. Sir, these are questions I'll that we would like answered. Out, okay? And we reveal how the government is failing to protect public money. This can never, ever be allowed to happen again. Ever. I'm really, I'm genuinely shocked. We'll be cheering, good luck. This is Paul Ruin in Cornwall. Every year, the children here are set a challenge before they start secondary school, to swim across the river to Foy and back. This is the worst bit. Come on, James! Come on, James! According to local tradition, the swim is to prove they could still get to school, even if the ferry breaks down. Most of the kids here, will they go to Foy River Academy? Um, James is actually going over to Foy in Foy. September. I think all the year sixes that are leaving Pole Ruin are going to Foy this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, James! Well done, James! Yeah. The school the children are joining isn't run by the local council. Foy River is one of 7,000 schools that have become academies. Half of all pupils in England now go to one. Academies are paid for by the government and run by private trusts. They're not supposed to make a profit, but some have been accused of doing just that. What we've seen is money disappearing into the trust that could have been spent on teacher salaries and children's education. Philip de Grey Water is the local vicar and chair of the school governors. He says even he hasn't been able to find out what's going on with the school finances. I mean, why a local governing board having to resort to freedom of information requests to gain access to information that we should have uh, just as a matter of, of course is, is ridiculous. When was the last time that you saw a financial report in relation to the school? That was uh, one year into the trust. So no one has any idea where the money's been spent since? No. Last three years, no idea. This is the man they blame for the secrecy. Hello. Hi. Businessman Michael Dwan is reported to be worth more than £100 million. My education gave me a fantastic start in life and I've been very fortunate to end up in the position that I'm in today. And with that fortune comes a great sense of responsibility and a need to give something back to communities just like the community that I grew up in. And my support for the academy movement was a very good opportunity to do just that. Mr Dwan says he's given £2.4 million to his schools. He set up the Adventure Learning Academy Trust, which runs Foy River and four other schools in Cornwall. They pay some of the highest charges in the country for overheads. Almost one pound in every 10 goes to the trust. Trusts are free to set their own charges. It's one of the many financial weaknesses in the academy system. The systematic issue here is the transparency and openness and lack of scrutiny, particularly local scrutiny, which leaves it open for people who want to exploit that. It's not for a second that everybody involved in academies is on the fiddle, absolutely not. Um, but uh, the structures and the frameworks appear to make that more possible um, and we appear to be seeing more of that as a problem. Michael Dwan also set up Bright Tribe Trust. It runs another 10 schools around the country. What do we want? You 
want it? Now! What do we want? New skill! When do we want it? Now! This is Whitehaven Academy in Cumbria. Parents here say the school has been starved of funds since Bright Tribe took over. Absolutely disgusted, to be honest. Disgusted. The trust won't talk to them about their complaints. If they're going to just scare scare out of a back door so they don't have to speak to anyone. Right, we'll come and get the cameras on because we're going out the Julie Rayson the has been, been trying to get answers from Bright Tribe <laughs> for two years. It, it's, it's just a scandal. So we just want to speak to them. Julie and her son both went to the school. So this is your son? Yep. Uh, that was just before you left. I'm really, really angry and upset because the funding that they should have put into that school to support it with the buildings, with resources, with teaching, teacher training, it just didn't happen. Even the local Tory MP can't get answers. When she went to the school to gather evidence about the state of the buildings, she was marched off the site. I took lots of photographs and videos, and I was so appalled that I rang the regional school commissioner's office and asked for some urgent intervention. 20 minutes later, the head teacher received an email from Bright Tribe asking that um, I be removed from the premises immediately. I want to see conditions for myself. We need to do this as fast as possible because I can hear people everywhere. Mr. Dwan says the school was in a very poor state of repair when Bright Tribe took over in 2014. The window is literally falling apart. And that he spent £600,000 of his own money trying to improve it. Look at these windows. It's crumbling in my hand. But there's not much sign of improvements. Many of the windows cannot be opened. And this summer, that made it unbearably hot. Pupils recorded the high temperatures in the classrooms. I've just got back from another day at school. The heat today has been absolutely unbearable. It's been much too hot to concentrate. And obviously with a lot of the windows in the classrooms not opening and some of them being restricted or even bolted shut, it's really difficult to cool the classrooms. It's just getting ridiculous now. It's too hot. Michael Duan insists none of this is his responsibility because he never controlled the trusts. But we have spoken to numerous insiders who say he made all the key decisions. I am not in control of the trust and never have been. I'm a very, very interested observer. I've never had any authority, never any decision-making power, and no vote. So all of the people that we spoke to who worked in the trusts are lying? I'm not saying they're lying. I'm telling you factually what the position is. I am not a trustee and never was a trustee. I'm not an officer. I'm not a decision-maker. But his own charities did control the trusts, and he chaired board meetings on their behalf. We've been told he was calling the shots. Say, look, it's a different address. Mm -hmm. Julie because wants to know why Whitehaven is in such a state. He must never just stop to do it. She has submitted dozens of freedom of information requests. This is every day? Yeah. It's just been really difficult, you know, it should all be there. We should just in black and white, you know, if you ask a question about where, as a taxpayer, government funding for, you know, for schools is going, you should be able to get answers straight away. Julie spotted that companies who'd done work at the school had one thing in common. That's a list of companies there. Yeah, companies that were doing work on the school site and Companies House, when you search, they've all got links to Michael Dwan. 
Michael Duan's business empire is run from his head office in Stockport. His companies were given contracts at schools run by his trusts. They were paid eight million pounds. The government says payments like this are allowed as long as companies don't make a profit from them. The cost of providing that eight million pounds of work and services was 10 and a half million pounds. So I actually made a loss. I received some revenue, but I made a loss. And throughout the whole period, I never, ever made any profit. I made a substantial loss. But the problem is, it's impossible to check whether the sums really add up. The question has to be, what are the conflicts of interest? And in a system where these things are supposed to be measured at cost, how do you know they're being measured at cost? Because you can't see that from the, the transactions. There just isn't enough information to see whether those, those things are being done at trust or indeed whether the work's being done at all. And we found evidence of exactly that. The trusts taking public money for work that was never done. This is another school run by Bright Tribe, Colchester Academy. We were a school that was doing well financially. We were in a good position. And suddenly we had budgets slashed. And that meant that our staff suffered, but more importantly, our students. Staff were particularly worried about the school sports centre. Internal walls were unstable and in danger of collapse. So the government gave Bright Tribe £566,000 to knock down the walls and rebuild them. That work was never done. There were questions being raised by our PE teachers, by our site staff. How was it that a sports hall that should have had so much money spent on it, but what they were left with was, was very poor, very poor indeed. It's obvious that the government grant has not been spent as it should have been. These walls should have been taken down and rebuilt, but that never happened. Instead, the builders simply patched them with metal braces. We've been told by an insider that the job only cost about £60,000. So what happened to the other half a million? We have let students down by allowing an individual to run a multi-academy trust that doesn't seem to be operating for their educational benefit. And what does half a million mean in education terms for children? You could have had a teaching assistant in every single classroom for a year for that money. The walls at Colchester Academy gym were not dangerous. There was never any indication that they were dangerous. When our own surveying team investigated those walls, they did not require knocking down. They required additional work and additional bracing work to make them safe. And the balance of the funding was used to generally bring the gym back into use. Where did the money go, Mr. Duan? It's what? half a million pounds. It wasn't spent in the school, in the gym works. All the money was spent on the schools and all the money was spent on the project areas that I've just told you about. Bright Tribe also got a £255,000 grant for fire safety improvements. But that work was never completed either. So all above us is a ceiling where there's meant to have been fire protection work. They left a void in the ceiling that would allow fire to spread. And they failed to replace more than 100 fire doors with new ones. Fire doors are supposed to stop the smoke, aren't they? And the flames. I can get my hand right underneath that door. And I can actually see the corridor right the way down through.
Bright Tribe was warned by school staff that the safety work had never been completed and is a fire hazard. And in the event of a fire, it would spread throughout the building. Despite this, Bright Tribe still claimed all the money. You were given a quarter of a million pounds for fire safety in Colchester. Did you do the work? We not only did the work, we ensured that, that the building was safe. Did you fire stop the ceiling, Mr. Duan? We carried out whatever works were necessary to ensure the building was safe. Did you fire stop the ceiling, yes or no? We carried out all works necessary to ensure the building was safe. Mr. Duan, there's supposed to have been over 100 fire doors replaced and fire stopping put in the ceiling to stop the risk of a fire spreading. Did that happen? We carried out all works, which included fire stopping, included replacement of some fire doors, included upgrading the fire alarm system, included training staff to ensure that it was fully compliant with the fire risk assessment and to ensure the trust got value. And we provided those services at cost or less. This is quite simply untrue and incorrect to present anything other than that. Is that a work completion certificate? That's not a document we've ever seen before. Well, it's one of your own documents, so it should be familiar if to Mr. If you Dwan. provide me with a document through the normal channels, I'll get my team to look at it and we'll okay. come back to you. Well, let's talk through the document I have, because I think you'll find that you will be able to identify no. it when you have no, a look no. at it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And it's no, the answer's no. Charged to Bright Tribe Trust yeah. here at King's Reach. It's the building we're actually in. And this sorry, is a work stop completion filming. certificate, sir, that says that the work has been done and it's been signed off. Stop, please. please. Stop. Sir, these are questions that we would like answered. I'll just leave the room while you sort this out, OK? Our investigation reveals serious problems with the way academies are regulated. There simply aren't enough checks on how public money is spent. Take that major grant to rebuild the sports centre walls. This is the government form that they have to sign to prove that the work's been done. There's absolutely no detail about the job. There's just two words that say, project complete. School finances used to be scrutinized locally. Now, the government is trying to audit over 7,000 schools from Westminster. It's hard to escape the conclusion that a more nationalised system has created the opportunity for more things to go wrong in terms of governance and finance and so on. The lack of scrutiny and the lack of transparency um, create that opportunity and where there's an opportunity, um, some people will take that opportunity. The government says it's tightening the rules about people doing work for their own trusts but there are ways around the rules. In Whitehaven, the government gave Bright Tribe £320,000 for energy efficient lighting. The trust handed the contract to a company owned by a close associate of Mr. Dwan, who then subcontracted the work straight back to Mr. Dwan's company. Three years later, most of the lights haven't even been fitted. Here they are, still stacked in a school cupboard. This summer, an independent engineer was asked to check the work. He wouldn't talk to us. Hiya, Hiya. Come on in. You okay? Hiya. But I'm hoping yeah, he might speak to Julie. I think it's going to be the only chance, really, that the community are going to find out what's really happened up there. I think, you know, he's, he's a professional that can answer quite a lot of questions. Well, essentially, the big one is, does the work justify the amount of money that's mm. allegedly been spent? Yeah. OK, there you go. This is a big moment for Julie. Hi, it's Julie from Whitehaven. She has two really years worth of this. unanswered questions. Be, uh, our only hope of <laughs> getting some answers about what's been going on up here. Did you think that there was a lot of work done around the school on LED lights? The government gave the trust £320,000. But the engineer says only around £20,000 worth of work has been completed. 
So there's definitely, there's no way, that's not just on the likes, there's no way there's been that amount of money done, is there? Yeah, yeah, no. It looks like Julie was right all along. It, it's shocking. It, it's real, it's what, what I thought. Well, it's just been confirmed. It's vast amount of money. It's, it's, it's just really upsetting. Really upsetting that there's been children there that... Sorry, this... The money should have been spent on the children. You know, there could, there could have been teacher training, resources, classrooms that, that were comfortable. We've discovered something else at Whitehaven. The trust was given £200,000 to upgrade its boilers. But instead of buying new ones, it moved some old boilers from a disused part of the school. The independent engineer estimated that only £22,000 worth of work has been done. Here is the invoice, Trudy. What has happened is that boilers have been taken from a area of the school that has now been mothballed, and those old boilers have been refitted in the school. Who was paying these bills? Would you pay a bill if work had not been completed in your house? No. I certainly wouldn't. So who was signing these off to be paid? The MP wants the police to investigate our findings. Lights haven't been fitted, work hasn't been carried out. We need some common sense applied to this. And if that happens, surely this is a criminal investigation. Mr Dwan's lawyers say all work was completed at cost or less and has been verified as such by an extensive audit by the government. They say the old boilers were used to save on reconfiguration costs for the boiler room and that new boiler components were installed. Back in Cornwall, we've uncovered a similar problem. We've got hold of invoices that the school governors have never seen. They show how Foy River Academy has also been charged £300,000 for energy efficient lighting. May, 45,000. June, 60,000. July, 60,000. August, 60,000. September, 60,000. That's a lot of money. It's outrageous. So this is money that uh, the school has been made to borrow from the government. There's no way I can say that there's 300,000 pounds worth of LED lighting, and it just isn't. That loan is now being repaid at, a, at something like 33,000 pounds every year on our balance sheet. Mm -hmm. It's the pupils of several years to come who will still be paying, who will have one less teacher because of this. The most shocking part of this scandal is that the government was warned. It then investigated Mr. Duan's trusts in 2015 and found serious failings. But the government still gave Bright Tribe another million pounds. The cash was to set up a northern hub for academies in the northeast. But last December, Bright Tribe announced it was pulling out of the project and the million pounds hasn't been repaid. We warned them three years ago, Bell should have been ringing then, but they rewarded this trust by giving them an extra million pounds for expanding in the north. You know, alarm bells should have been ringing all through this process, and clearly something's gone so terribly wrong. To account for the million pounds, Bright Tribe gave the government a list of the people who it said had worked on the Northern Hub project. This is the list, and we found a serious problem. I've spoken to people on the list, and they've told me that they never worked on the Northern Hub project. I have never set foot in schools in Northumberland. I haven't been near any of the schools. I'm totally shocked. I never did any work up there. Good Lord. I never did anything like that amount of work. I've never done any work up there. 
It looks like more public money that's not been accounted for. And the local Tory council says the government is to blame. A number of people on that list have never carried out any work for any of the schools in the North East at all. What do you think of that? I am absolutely disgusted. If that is factually correct, I am appalled. That is a complete dereliction of duty to our community here and to actually the public purse. That's a disgrace. Absolute disgrace. This can never, ever be allowed to happen again. Ever. I'm really, I'm genuinely shocked. I really am. Mr. Dwan's lawyers say no issues have been raised after a government audit and that every allegation we have made is completely denied. Two months ago, Michael Dwan cut all ties with both Bright Tribe and Adventure Learning Academy Trusts. The new bosses say they have immediately commissioned independent investigations to ensure value for money, transparency, good governance and oversight. They say that if any rules have been breached, then swift action will be taken. The government says Bright Tribe Trust is not representative of all academies and it will not tolerate those who try to exploit the system for personal gain. It says more than 95% of trusts had no issues and it will continue to clamp down on financial wrongdoing if it arises. Whitehaven School is moving to another trust and the government is providing funding to rebuild it. But the other schools face an uncertain future. In Cornwall, James has just started his first term at Foy River Academy. But thanks to Michael Dwan, there may be less cash to teach him. Schools exist for children, to give them the best possible start in life. They do not exist to provide an income stream for private firms. Our investigation has revealed deep flaws in the system. I'm a Conservative MP. This is our party policy to roll out multi-academy trusts, but I'm speaking out because it's wrong. The government needs to take urgent action to stop business cashing in on schools and to protect the money that's meant for our children's education.